Then we have some that tries to fit other kinds of distributions like negative binomial or pass on. And then we have the issue to decide what is the distribution of our single cell data. So here is just a group of genes plotted uh, with the expression across a data set of single cell. And the big issue is that there is not a one fits all distribution for single cell data. We have some highly expressed genes that almost start approaching a normal or binomial distribution. Then we have these high, lowly expressed genes that where most of the expression is zero. And then we have something in between. So there's a whole range of dist different distributions that people try to fit to single cell data. Mm. So we can use the binomial distribution. I'm not gonna go through this in detail. Negative binomial, which more fits better, I think, because by tweaking the negative binomial, we can get these very lowly expressed genes, but also the highly expressed genes. We can have the zero inflated negative binomial. Now we're getting even closer to what the single cell data looks like, or we can use the Poisson distribution or the Poisson beta uh, that also then can capture these uh, zeros in the single cell data. I, I have a small question about yeah. the, the zeros. So I'm just curious uh, what you guys think, like with the current technologies for capturing single cells, like is zero like just technical artifacts or is it really a gene not being present uh, or transcribed? Uh, a mix. So if you remember from the very first lecture uh, I had about the transcriptional bursting. So the zeros can be transcriptional burstings that the gene in a population where a gene is expressed over a time course, it, there still will be presence absence of that gene. Uh, the zeros can also be that it's not expressed at all. And then we should keep in mind that we're detecting less than half of all the molecules in the cell, most likely much less than half. So we do a random sampling of, uh, of the uh, molecules that are in there. So I would say if you had a perfect method where you captured all the molecules, it would still be zero inflated, but not as much Be because of transcriptional bursting and also this presence absence. I mean, if we look at <clears throat> uh, this gene, for instance, mm -hmm. it is probably not expressed in most cell types in this data set. Uh, and it probably, would have a little bit more up here if we increased the sensitivity to 100%. But for perhaps this gene is one where everything would be in this area for the perfect method. But these zeros here might also be to transcriptional bursting. So the protein might be present in all the cells, but the RNA isn't. Did that answer your question? Yeah, I th think that makes sense. I was just good because I was reading a bit about like, like whether single cell data is actually zero inflated or not. Uh, oh, it's this. Like uh, yeah, I know the stuff. paper. <laughs> yeah, it's like a I'm, I'm not quite data. agreeing completely. I, I mean, it's, it's also the terminology zero inflated maybe is wrong. Uh, mm -hmm. Of course, you get more zeros when we can't detect all molecules. But if it's close to what it looks like in the cell uh, due to transcriptional bursting, is it really inflated then? Or is it just that we have a lot of zeros? Yeah, I see. That's yeah. sort of the <laughs> philosophical question. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, so we can fit a lot of dist dist 
different distributions and then run tests of how significantly different these different parameters in the distributions are for the different uh, cell populations. So that would be the negative binomial or Poisson. And then we have MOSS that is trying to do sort of a mix. It's a super complicated paper to read, uh, but it's doing a combination of two tests, you could say, uh, where one is more or less the proportion of zeros, the proportion of uh, cells that express the gene and doesn't express the gene. And the other part is among those cells that do express the gene, is there a different in, difference in expression level? And then they combine uh, the values of those two tests together 